Whenever you're working with a list or a dictionary in Python, you might find yourself wanting to filter through certain elements or maybe do perform one function on each element in the list. And when you want to do something like this, Python actually gives us a very nice syntax called comprehensions. But before we dive into comprehensions, I just want to quickly just go over the list and the dictionary just so we don't get confused. So a list is just a collection of items in sequential order and we access each item based on its index starting at zero. So in this case, item one, two, three has an index of zero string has an index of one, etc. And in Python, lists are surrounded by square brackets. And then also unlike a lot of other programming languages, they can contain a mixture of different data types. A dictionary is similar to a list in that it's also a collection of items. But instead of referring to each item based on its index, we give it a key and we use that key to refer to it. So in this case, our item Ivan has a key of name. So whenever we want to retrieve Ivan, we use the key name. And same with surname, it's Carl. So in Python, dictionaries are surrounded by curly brackets. The values are accessed using the keys instead of the indexes. It can also contain a mixture of data types. So Let's jump into the syntax of a list comprehension. So a list comprehension, it looks similar to a list in that it's also surrounded by square brackets, but that's about it. The first item that we always specify in a list comprehension is whatever we want to return. So in this case, we're going to perform some function on X and return the result of that. Then we have a for loop which basically loops through some sequence or list or anything and assigns each item in that list to X. And then lastly, we can also have a conditional statement at the end of our list comprehension, which lets us filter results if we want. So if we want all the even numbers, we can do a conditional to do that. So using what we've learned, let's do an example, a few examples for list comprehensions. So in this first example, we're going to take every number in the original list, which here we've called n, and we're going to square it and then assign it to a new list. So let's call this new list squared n and let's write our list comprehension. So the first thing we're going to specify is what we want to return. In this case, we want to return the square of every element in the list. So we're going to say x times x. Then we want to configure our for loop to loop through each element in n and assign it to x. So we're just going to say for x in n. So this just reads, return the square for every x element, for every element in the n list. And if we print this, let's see what we get. So here you'll see one squared is one, six squared is six, and four squared is 16, etc. As you can see, it's just squared every number in the list. In this next example, we're going to do a bit of filtering and we're only going to return all the numbers in the original array that are even. So in this case, we're going to be using a conditional. So let's store these numbers in a new list called even n and write our list comprehension. So we're not going to be doing any processing. So we're just going to be returning x, which is every item in our list of n. So after our loop, we're going to specify a conditional now. We're going to say if, and whenever this conditional is true, it's going to return the element in the new list. If it's false, it's just going to skip the element and it's not going to add it to the new list. So we only want to add the new element if x modulo two is equal to zero. And in that case, it will be even. And if we print this new list, you'll see that it only returned 4, 8, and 12 because those are the only even numbers in our original list. In this third example, we're going to combine what we've learned in the last two examples and return a list that only contains all the odd numbers in the original list, but then we also want to double them in our new list. So let's call our new list doubled odd n 
and write our list comprehension. So every time we return a value, we want to double it. So we're just going to say 2 times x, and that's for each element in n. But now obviously we only want to get the elements which are odd in our original array. So we're going to need a conditional. So we're going to say only return the value if x, which is each item in that list, modulo 2 is not equal to 0. And in that case we know that's definitely going to be odd. And if we print this, you'll see that it's going to return 14 because that's 7 times 2. It skipped 4 because that was even. Then it returned 2 because that's 1 times 2. And then 6 because that is 3 times 2. And the rest all even, so it skipped it. In this last example for list comprehensions, we're going to do something a bit more fancy. We're going to go through each number in the original list. And if it's an odd number, we're going to double it. And if it's an even number, we're going to halve it. So let's store this new list in a list called manipulated n and write our comprehension. So let's first write, we know that we're going to get x for x in n. And this we know is just going to return x for each item in the original list. We don't have any conditional because we're not getting rid of any elements. The only conditional we have is here with our return value. So we only want to double all the odd numbers and half all the even numbers. So we have some sort of if. And in this case, we're going to use an inline if to do this. So an inline if in Python is a bit different from other programming languages, but it makes a lot of sense because it sounds almost like an English sentence. So in this case, we're going to return x divided by 2 if x is even, i.e. x modulo 2 is equal to 0, otherwise let's just return 2 times x. In that case it's going to be odd. And if we print this, you'll see that 1 is an odd number so it was doubled. 7 is an odd number so it was doubled. 3 is odd so it was doubled to 6. 4 is an even number so it was halved. And you'll see that with the rest of the array, that same pattern continues. So let's move on to the syntax of a dictionary comprehension. So a dictionary comprehension is very similar to a list comprehension. Instead of returning just a value, we return a key value. Also, dictionary comprehensions in Python are surrounded by curly braces and not square brackets like a list. Then, similar to a list comprehension, we also have our for loop, which just iterates through each item in a list or a dictionary or any collection of items. And then lastly, just like in a list comprehension, we can also have a conditional, which filters out results. So in our first example, we're going to create a dictionary of numbers where the key is a number and the value is that number squared. And we're going to assign this dictionary to a variable called numbers with squares. So because it's a dictionary comprehension, we surround it in curly braces. And let's start writing it. So we have to return both a key and a value with a dictionary. And these are separated by a colon. So in this case, our key is x. And our value is going to be x squared, so x times x. And x is going to be each item in our original list. In this case, you'll see we don't have an original list, so I'm just going to use a Python range. And I want to go from 1 to 10, which means I have to put 11 as our, my end, my upper bound, because Python goes to the upper bound minus 1. And so if we print this numbers with squares, you'll see... Our key, which is just x, is going to be just the numbers, which is 1, 2, 3. And then the value is going to be 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared, which is 4, 3 squared, which is 9. So here we have a very simple dictionary of numbers with their square values. In this next slightly more practical example, we're going to take a dictionary of personal details, and you'll see that the values have white space before or after the text in the string and we want to write a dictionary that or dictionary comprehension that's going to trim the white space from the values so let's store this these new details in details underscore stripped 
So we're stripping the white space. And because there's a dictionary comprehension, it's curly braces. So again, we return our key value. So our key in this case, we're not going to do anything special with it. We're going to keep it as it is. So we're just going to return the key. And then our value, we're going to strip it. And in Python, we have a special method called dot strip on a string, which removes that extra white space before or after the text. And to loop through the original dictionary, we're going to say for key comma value in and now you see we're looping through and we're getting two values in our for loop and to do that we need to say details dot iter items and that returns each item in the dictionary as a key value pair so if we print this new dictionary that we have you'll see that our keys have remained the same and the order doesn't really matter and but you'll see I'll notice that our values that it stripped the white space before or after each of the values. In this last example, we're just going to do a quick filter on a dictionary. So here you'll see we have a dictionary with song data. So we have the song name, the artist, and you see those all have values. But when we get to the strumming pattern key, you'll see that its value is blank and the same with the timing. So we're going to write a Python dictionary comprehension, which is going to remove all the items in that dictionary where the value is blank. So let's call this new dictionary non empty data. And because it's a dictionary comprehension, we use curly braces. So we're not doing any fancy processing to the key or the value. So we can just return key colon value for and just like we looped through the dictionary in the last example, we're going to say for key comma value in data, which is our dictionary dot iter items, which returns that key value pair. But now what we want to do is we want to filter it. So let's do put in a conditional. And we say we only want to return the key value pair if the value is not blank. And there's a few way of few ways of checking this. But in this case, I'm just going to say if value is not equal to nothing. So if value has something, then it must return that key value pair. And if we print this new dictionary, you'll see that it's only returned three items and all three of these items have actual values in their value. So it's left out the strong pattern and the timing because they don't have a value. So hopefully this video has opened your eyes to some of the features that Python has that tries to make our life easier. These comprehensions are often a lot more readable in your code when you use them than a for loop, for example. And in Python, they also have a few performance benefits. So whenever you're writing Python code that's iterating through an array or a dictionary or a list, just check and see. Maybe you can do the same thing, but with a comprehension instead of a loop.